All right, welcome to the LincolnList.com, everyone. This is Doug, and this is the week review for the 22nd of June. Hope all is well with you. The month is almost over, so if you're sitting there and you're struggling a little bit or you're not where you think you should be as a trader, take a moment, visit the LincolnList.com, take a 14-day free trial to our live trade room. It is not a chat room. It is a trade room. You see every trade live on screen in real time. It's like nothing that you've ever seen, so visit the LincolnList.com, take a 14-day free trial. We'll talk a little bit about the spy for lack of a better word i'm just going to say it's bipolar because it's e every day it's either are we going to raise rates or are we going to help greece is greece going to go broke we're going to raise rates greece rates greece rates back and forth and it just really depends on how the market wants to interpret it that day it's when when we started out we, we started to see some selling there last week greece was going to default and now greece is going to get help market rips and they decide they're not going to raise rates after the Fed meeting, market rips. So it's still kind of back and forth. You know, it's it's still moving a little more, or I should say, even though it's choppy, it's still continuing to float towards the 208, 10s, and 11 area as versus some of the supports. We, ha we got there a couple of times last week, but it seems, or the theme I've been saying over and over with this is every time you get a few days of selling or a couple of red days, something always comes back or comes out and this thing doesn't about face. You hit a few spots down in here into this area right here, this 207.60s, a couple of bounces here over the last month or so. So, you know, if you're taking a bearish view, uh, until you start getting down there, as I keep saying over and over again, maybe I'll stop talking about it in every weekend watch list because we're just kind of tight stuck in this range. Until we start getting down in towards that 207. 207s, 206s, then you might start to entertain the idea of, of being bearish. As I've been saying, though, we've been floating more towards the upper side of this channel than we have been the lower side. And maybe we do finally get a push above 213, 214s and start to see some new highs before there there is any kind of correction. We'll just have to play it day by day. As I said, lack of better word, kind of bipolar. But you know what you really want is you want stocks because I've been saying over and over again, it doesn't really matter so much anymore what this market is doing because they're there are stocks that are completely honey badgering, regardless of what this market is doing. So going into this week, I think we've got some great setups. One of these is a med. If you're following me on Twitter, I've talked about this. I've posted some charts. This has to be, or it doesn't have to be anything. I should reverse that. It's going to be my top play this week as far as a short. I think we've got a really, not a, a, a tier one top play set up here, but we're pretty close. I started into a little piece of it short here. Just something small here at the 4242s. But you have literally about, I don't know, since really the beginning of May, maybe just two to three red days and very minimal red at that. And this thing has had some pretty good price change, about 12 bucks. We've certainly seen stocks go a lot more than that. But what a grinder. I mean, this thing is, is just day after day, kind of like what we saw with Cena a few days ago. But, you know, with Cena. It, it was a little bit more parabolic, had a little bit more range to it. Let me pull up that chart for you. You know, you got a little bit more parabolic. And red will come into these charts, just like the Herdixes of the world. The key will always be what kind of red will you get. Will you get something in along the lines of a shop like this where you can get some a big parabolic and a couple of really nice red flush days? Or will they just be small? But going back to a med here, I really like the way this stock looks. A lot of green days. Just looking to play some red. And whether it stays red, that's another story. But I think you should be able to get this thing to settle in somewhere around 40. And we'll see what happens there. Either it pulls down a little bit more. Maybe it flags and it starts to make new highs. If that's the case, I wouldn't be opposed to buying it. But a chart that looks like this with so many updates. And really, since late May, you've seen just a, a launch of this stock once it cleared this breakout area of 31. It's just been nonstop. And since that moment, there's only been this one teeny weeny little itsy bitsy red day there. And I wouldn't even call it a red day. It's just so little. But we'll see what happens here. Really, the top short going into this week is Ahmed. It's not the first time that I, I spoke of it. Also, ADMS may be something you want to entertain here as a short. Range wise, it's not the largest that we see, but you got a pretty good RSI. Nice little parabolic setup here. Uh, I think for this one, I'd like to see maybe a little bit more, maybe one more push 
up into the 28th. One more big old parabolic day to kind of settle it in a little bit better. But it's one chart I want to put in, in, into the rotation here and just kind of keep my eyes on it. I think maybe as a day trader, you might be lacking a little bit of range and intraday volume on this. But still, I like the daily chart. I want to kind of take a, a few days there and kind of watch it. Another nice little chart here is this SEDG. We'll call it SEDGE. This is a nice little possible breakout setup here. Just kind of cleared that breakout area on the daily chart right here at uh, 41.49. And this late day run is really where you needed to buy it once it really started to gear. And this is where, if, if you go to the website and you just hit the search bar, you just do a Google search, you get multi time frame breakouts. I did a video about this. And some of you probably already know, but when you can get multi time frame breakouts, such as in this case where you've got a five minute chart coinciding with a daily chart breakout, those breakouts, if you're a breakout trader, those are going to be over time a lot better to trade because they're going to be a little more powerful or reliable. As you know, not all breakouts are created equal, but something like this, you see what happens as soon as it clears that, it just starts ripping. You know, and it's it's just going. Once it gets that momentum behind it, it's hard to stop. So you don't want to chase in it. You want to be in it as early as possible. So real nice multi-time frame breakout. Now, even though it has broken out, it did settle in a little bit later in the day. I want to use this 4127, 4130 area where it, it, it really broke out. I want to start using that as a support. So maybe if it comes down a little bit, you can catch an early morning flush or something like that. It'll bounce around or settle in something like this around that 41. And then maybe you'll start to see a nice little push up, up again on this or one that would be worthy enough for a buy. In the event that something like this gaps up or, you know, just shoots right out of the open, it's really tough after it's already made new highs and then to chase the gap up. You, maybe that trade works out for you to the long side, but that's a, over time, that's a difficult trade to make work. And most of the time, it's going to come back to haunt you. So if it does gap up, depending on the size of the gap up, depending on what the intraday charts look like, who knows, maybe there's a short. I kind of like this one a little bit long, though. We'll see what happens here. Roughly around the 41 level, going to need a little bit more push. And let's take a look at this BCRX. It's uh, one of these stocks that's been around for a little while. It's like you, 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 if you trade for long enough, it's like you trade a stock and it goes away for six months and it's off your watch list and it creeps back up and sometimes it's a year. It's like they just kind of cycle them way back and say, hey, I remember you. BCRX is one of them. Been around a long time, traded it several times. A couple of really, really nice days. And, you know, what we're seeing a lot here is it, it's hard sometimes to gauge these pharma companies because a lot of them are parabolic, but they continue to go more parabolic or the pullbacks that they render are very, very little and they just keep ripping. Once... You know, maybe a year ago or two years ago, you could look at a chart like this and just rush right into it and say, I'm just going to short it and it would work. Now, that's not the case because you've seen massive runs in stocks like Legend, other pharma space stocks, and you got to be careful. It's like you could short these things if they set up right. But if you fight with it too much or it takes too long to develop, you got to get out of it because it just could be consolidating and basing and then it's just ready to rip again and squeeze out everybody who's being stubborn. Now, having said that, it's been a couple of nice days. I don't want to sit here and say what direction. I'll let the market decide what it wants to do with it. You know, as I said, maybe a couple of years ago, I would just say this is a short. You already broke out. You got a three strong days. Odds are you're going to get a red. Well, maybe you get a red or two, but it's nothing, to, you know, nothing big. So it might flag and then and then re gear and rip. Just want to watch it. You got a lot of volume, a lot of interest. A lot of attention on this. It is a former runner, so you kind of have to respect that a little bit. I think if the dips get bought early on Monday morning, and this thing is reluctant to lose 1550 or thereabouts, odds are it's going to go a lot higher. I mean, kind of like an S SGYP, where you know even if it doesn't make sense or it looks ridiculous, it is the reality right now, and that's the way the market is. So you kind of have to adapt. If you want to be successful as a trader, that's one of the things you'll have to do is constantly change over time so let's get back to talking about this stock i think if it holds 1550 or thereabouts you're probably going to see a squeeze above 16 big gap ups big parabolics chasers to come in on monday my focus would be going to the short side probably about one fourth of position and then see what kind of pool you can get 
So I'm going to leave it at that. Other than that, that's going to be the start. You, you just never know, though, what the market's going to bring. I mean, you come there, you got this watch list, you got these stock ideas. And then when it starts, the market opens, there's all this other stuff coming. There's all this news. There's all this acquisition talk. And, you know, if you want to be successful as a trader, you have to be able to decipher this information within a split second and make a decision. Because a lot of times you just don't have time to sit there and do all this research. So if you're kind of struggling with that or you want to be with a team where you've got all of these eyes on the market and you have instant access to news, help, charts, and just just someone there to pick you up when you're down or get you to the next level, visit the LincolnList.com. Other than that, you guys have a great day. Have a great week of trading. Thanks for watching this video. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon.